scope 2-2 two, two draw against America, all wins for white pieces. Give us your thoughts. Yeah, okay, so I think we had chances for more, uh, but it was always difficult. Uh, it's, a, it's a good team, and uh, you could look at the rating and say that we were favorites. Uh, uh, we were 76 and a half rate point ahead on average. You know, sometimes when you're sitting there uh, just waiting for the games to go on, you, uh, uh, I have a book, and, uh, but still you have to entertain yourself sometimes. I'm so okay. Uh, let's take the games. Uh, let's take them from the top. So Humpy uh, did nothing special in the opening. Some uh, quiet variation of the... Uh, the Queen's Gambit declined, slightly fashionable, but you know, not not too uh, uh, not too dangerous. And uh, so Tonsky, she tried to equalize by force, and I was not sure about this knight e4. It looked like there could be a, an actual refutation somewhere. But Humpy thought for seven eight minutes, and she took something which was simply just better. And then I didn't really understand what she was doing, which means that I was very interested in the game from that point on, because I've known so far that if I don't know what she's doing, it's me that's the problem, it's not her. And uh, she really maneuvered well, took on d4 on, uh, on the right, at the right time, had this f4 break, and then she was threatening the a7 pawn, and black had to play a6. Uh, I, I didn't see a forced, a uh, way for, uh, for white to have a big advantage, but white certainly has an advantage. But giving up the ace uh, seven pawn with mm, taking on c4 is just uh, dropped. That's his a6 tactic. And then there, there are many tactics. And let's say I felt, uh, I felt really good the moment we were queen up on that board. That, that was a good moment. Okay, the second game uh, between uh, Harika and, uh, and Crush, well, you have that from Crush. Uh, I was thinking in the end maybe there was a, a way to draw it, but you know, if she plays, instead of King F5, plays F6, and there's Rook G7, King F5, Rook F7, and still lost. But so, I think you made a very important point that any end game apart from the Rook end game is supposedly draw, yeah? I was about to say that. Yeah, they, they, they are, uh, every end game is better for white. But uh, all of them holds except for the rook ending. I think. I think even the pawn ending holds. Um, so yeah, that was. Uh, Tanya played a really good game. Again, from the opening, was nothing special. Some position she got the two bishops, but you know, it was not nothing special. And, um, I think Black maybe made a slight mistake with rook a c8 with the idea c5. You want to play c5, you play c5. Uh, we saw later that uh, the queen comes to a5, and it's uncomfortable no matter what she does. Black tried this uh, a6 pawn sacrifice, taken a6, rook a8, a7. And at that point, I think Black had to play d4 to stay in the game, because uh, after cd5, she played Queen d6, so cd5, then the game opens up, and for sure there are, there are many strong moves after ed5. Um, knight h4 was, was quite a practical solution. Uh, I thought e4 could work as a tactic, but it's totally unnecessary. Rook ac1 was the move I, I thought was strongest, but there were so, so many strong uh, options in that position. Um, and if black has some fantastic way of saving the position, so be it. Uh, she was already low on time, and uh, Tanya thought be practical, keep a big advantage, have time to calculate at a moment when she could calculate very, uh, very deeply and could see everything, rather than waste the time early. Also, opponent didn't know what to do, so don't don't slow down too much. So it, it went as it should do, which is, okay, maybe knight h4 is not the most precise, but you have to have a computer to find out how to equalize, and you should probably make an appendix if there is a way. Uh, and, and, well, there was some nice stuff at the end. There was a, was a nice c4 and bishop e5 tactic, which was, uh, was very pretty. Um, but generally, white just dominated that game. Uh, and the last game was, 
that was poor actually and uh, it's you know as, uh, as coaches we're sitting near the fourth board and I uh, I don't like it when my player looks tired after the rest day but this tournament is so hard I'm tired as well and I'm not playing you know uh, or I'm playing four boards you can choose to, to see it as you want uh, I, I don't think I'm playing because uh, I'm thinking so okay so uh, in the opening black was fine it was some sideline of an Inso Indian and in the beginning Isha played it fine um, I thought at some point she should play a little more active but he's played this uh, h6 and uh, bishop f6 queen f6 it's probably still fine at that point and then uh, she played queen e7 which was just a horrible blunder and after knight d4 she's in big trouble and there she played uh, she played well she thought for a while and played well and found this uh, option of going into a an end game with opposite color bishops um, and pawn down so technically it should be a draw but it's not easy and uh, she didn't defend it very well um, first off she allowed white to get the rook in uh, to the eight rank and, and roam around and it's clear that she had some other considerations she didn't do this because she had no ideas there's other things she was more afraid of but i think this was a mistake um, then uh, Jennifer you she played it uh, really well and uh, she lined up this uh, bishop on c4 and this f4 f5 break uh, exploiting the second weakness on f7 really textbook stuff and when Isha played bishop d4 check which I'm not sure was the best move bishop d4 check if white plays king d6 I think it's, uh, it's just over um, but after uh, king f4, which is move 40, if I'm not wrong, then uh, Isha could uh, take two times on f5, take on f7 check, rook takes f7 check, king e8, and she played king f5. There's no way of really avoiding uh, exchanging the rooks because otherwise black plays rook f1 check and f4. Uh, so especially if the bishop comes to e3, then, then we have a draw for sure. Uh, not a simple draw, but it should be a draw then. Uh, so king f5 and here uh, move it's essentially the first move out of time control it's maybe 43 or something first time to think after time control each after two minutes played a5 and, and this shows she was tired uh, she had to play uh, uh, rook f1 check white has to play uh, king g6 rook f7 bishop takes f7 check king e7 and b4 and here we come to a very interesting end game uh, which is not obvious at all uh, i uh, i can give a little information which is without a pawns it's a draw and uh, you can put a little famous thing into it uh, you remember the game between tupalov and shirov from i think uh, 1990 bishop h3 yeah? Ni uh, nine yes bishop h3 uh, at the time, uh, Sutowski gave analysis to the game where he essentially said that Black was winning anyway, it's very nice, but it's winning anyway, and he gave analysis which showed that we entered into this game with uh, E and B pawn. Or in that game, I think it was uh, D and G pawn, and winning anyway. In the end, uh, with um, Black's winning in a position which is theoretical draw. And this could happen before, uh, before the engines and the six man table bases. And nobody knows everything. I'm not uh, trying to uh, trying to uh, criticize uh, Emil at all. Uh, I've probably made worse mistakes in each and every one of my books. But anyway, so we could get this endgame, but with a pawns, which means in some situations uh, White will try to play b6, a b6, a6, and Black has to have the bishop in the diagonal and be ready for b5 immediately. Is it a fortress or not? Uh, I don't know. Uh, one of the things that, that helps White is that the bishop has the right corner, so White can win with an A pawn alone. At some point, I thought maybe you could like force uh, the B pawn to B5 play A6, and then you draw in the right corner, but it's the wrong corner. Um, my gut feeling is it's probably uh, it's probably lost. And, uh, 
Well, there's a, a, a free program online called Final Gen, Spanish Final being Endgame, uh, where you can check. It will probably take like two hours or something for the machine to check, and you can see if it's winning a draw. Uh, it, it might be drawn in the most mysterious way or winning in the most mysterious way. I, I would definitely look forward to looking at it myself. After that, there was like some blunders. Uh, Black played rook a7, bishop b4, and she just missed rook a5. She played uh, uh, rook b7. And uh, here, black has to play, uh, keep the rook in the d file. Uh, I think Isha sort of was mentally just dead and just making moves and rather than trying to hold it. Uh, but if the rook stays in the d-file, then uh, the exchange sacrifice is not as obvious. I think it still wins for white. Um, but okay, it had to be tried. So, tough game and uh, I, th I think Jennifer played really, really well. I want to say that. I know it's the board we were uh, outrating our opponent uh, the most, I think. But I didn't consider, I consider it our most dangerous board because She's young, she plays really well. We've seen in the, in the high profile US Championship uh, for a few years now. Really plays well, played really well here. I'm not sure if she's made a draw if she's won all the game. It's something like this. Uh, she's five and a half on six. Five and a half out of six, yeah. Uh, so, the situation is uh, I'm not sure uh, how it is with Ukraine and China. I think it's drawn both three and four. Board one and two, board one, uh, China has some winning chances, and board two, Ukraine has winning chances. So at some point I thought the games were going to be two draws, maybe it's going to be uh, one all. So well, that match might end 2-2. Uh, uh, then we have a match on board three uh, between Armenia and Russia, which Russia is losing. It was 2-0 uh, and uh, no winning chances on either board when I was looking. And it was like more or less towards the end in, in both games. So there might be 3 1 for Armenia. And board four, uh, I think Azerbaijan was doing well um, against Latvia, but now we're already out of, uh, out of what we care about. Really well. So, okay, it was, it was one of the matches where if you want to do really well, it would have been great to do well. But you saw in other matches, uh, they're just as tight and just as difficult. We are one point after the stage, uh, maybe the stage in Ukraine. And, you know, we, we, we're definitely still in it. Uh, we, we had a day where two players didn't play very well. And we, uh, we drew with the, the leaders. So I'm, I'm, I'm still very uh, optimistic and uh, still very confident on behalf of my team. Um, it's a tough tournament and uh, you know I, I play four Olympiads myself we don't play for medals in Denmark we won we got a, a silver in the B group and most people will never have heard of such a thing as a B group but it's just basically for team which are really really bad but not bad enough to be in the C group um, and you know we had some big matches I played against uh, China with Scotland twice and uh, played draw both times by the way uh, I think we might have lost three and a half both times as well. No, one time we lost two and a half. Uh, we lost two and a half and three and a half, and I drew in both matches. Um, so the pressure that I felt playing in a national team where there was no expectations was immense. I can only, uh, I can only start to imagine how it feels for the players here. So uh, if anyone starts to criticize them, just imagine that you've never ever done anything as tough as this in your life. Having said that, some of them are shining. Uh, okay, Harika had a bad game today, but her other games, she has fought like a tigress. And I'm really happy uh, overall with the team. This is a tough tournament. Um, we're close to the top. There's five rounds to go and there's going to be lots and lots of drama. And my opinion on this is everyone wants medals. But for the players here and for me, we are idiots if we don't enjoy it while it's happening. And this is also what people should do at home. They should follow the games live, they should turn off the engine because the engine numbs everything. You should try to follow the games 
himself and enjoy it while it lasts. So this is a great festival of chess and it happens every two years and this is your chance and no more questions. Thank you so much for your time and all these insights.